Hi, and welcome to the Jade Throne Podcast. I'm your host, Shay, this time in video. Uh, joining me on this one is in, well, disembodied voice only, is Jordan. Use the force, Shay. Okay. Hi, it's Jordan. Yeah. Yeah, no, we totally nailed this the first try. There was not a failed attempt at this at all. No, not at all. <laughs> yeah. We're so good at this. We're professionals. Yeah, no, I don't have a nightmare of an audacity setup going on right now. It's not audacity. No, I guess it's OBS. So I guess, yeah. But uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, we're here uh, trying out a new uh, video version of the podcast to go along with the audio version which if you're listening to this in the audio version, uh, yeah, sorry, uh, we're talking a lot about the video version. Yeah, no, it, it, it's the way of the future. So going forward, <laughs> you'll start seeing more of me as well. Yeah, so that all being said, uh, yeah, if you're listening to this on the, the podcast stream, uh, if you ever want to follow along on our spoiler cast episodes, we're now going to be able to, we're going to be putting them up on YouTube so the cards can be there. So you can see the pretty art as we talk about the cards. Oh, absolutely we will still be reading out cards um but mm -hmm. yeah it'll be easier for you at home all along yeah and uh there's a makeshift placeholder logo here uh hopefully in the near future i will finally get that uh that fixed logo in yeah no it's a it's a, it's a call back to to the roots yeah right yeah you know there's <laughs> Uh, Canva is a really fun program that you can use. <laughs> All right, Hello. but I guess, uh, yeah. What if Ed made every yeah. All right. So I guess with that being said, uh, we can just get to the actual like card previews. So uh, you you watchers, let's see if this works. So I'm going to disappear. And now, hey, we got cards. So yeah. Uh, Coming up, first thing we're going to talk about is, uh, hey, right after we uh, finished recording last time, uh, Rivals Fall dropped, which, uh, boy, oh boy. Yeah, this card, everybody was freaking out about. Um, oh, this is the worst. This is going to, you know, this is terrible for the game. It's going to, people are only going to ever play blue. Yeah, it's, Rivals Fall is a good card. It is fine. Uh, I am so very much excited that we are now entering a world where I can just, you know, tell people, yeah, but it, it dies to removal for every leader that people feel are overpowered. Right, exactly. So, yeah, this card's good. Um, this is not going to break the game. Um, like, you know, not trying to, like, make people upset or anything, but there were a lot of overreactions online. This card costs six to play. That is a hefty cost, um, you know, in this game that goes rather quickly where you can play three full games of Premier in, you know, 55 minutes. Um, this card is fine. Yeah, I look Honestly, forward. It is good for a common, but yeah. yeah. No, I, I very much look forward to my opponents, Boba Fett, equipping his fancy armor and being like, look at me, gaze upon me. I am undefeatable. And then... You let them, you know, they are very much defeatable. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, it's, no, this, it, yeah. So it's a balancing card. Yeah. And no. it was needed. Mm -hmm. No, um, it, it definitely, like, for some of the more expensive leaders, like Chewbacca leader, this is a bit of a bummer. Uh, the traditional Chewy plan is uh, harder to execute, but a lot of the you know higher cost leaders did get some like more support in this this does make vader leader a little by a little i mean a lot sad but there are some of the other leaders like palpatine still gets something when flipping out and some of the other expensive mm -hmm. leaders so we'll see i do feel like this is going to be a meta staple uh and in limited this is like just grab it grab as many of them as come your way Oh yeah, absolutely. But um, but I but I just I really like the initial response from the online community was like this is the most blessed thing ever, and I'm like this this is not. 
No, this is like, to be honest, this is a type of card effect. As long as it doesn't get printed to oblivion and like, you know, someone can run, oops, all defeat everything deck or it's too cheap. I think this is a fair price. I think if you think for two more, you play super laser blast and you wipe the board. So price is there. Yeah, exactly. That That's kind of where I'm at with it. I'm glad it's just like not tied to heroic or villainous. Like if this was a blue villainy card, it would be a whole different story. Agreed. But, but it is, you know. Yeah. But yeah, I do Hard. think. I do think this uh, pushes Vanquish out of a lot of constructed decks. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's a better Vanquish, right? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Do you want to move on now to the next card? Absolutely. Oh, just a second. Ah. All right. We've got, we've got Midnight Repairs. It's a two-cost event, double vigilance, tactic, heal up to eight total damage from any number of units. So yeah, yeah, no, I, yeah. I I really think, uh, especially with how um, like pure or double vigilance decks are showing, like they kind of want to be built. There's a lot mm-hmm. of really crazy effects in everything, and I I actually could see this in a like a blue ray or a blue chewy. Oh yeah, no, I can see it in chewy. I mean, I can see it in ray too, but definitely chewy. Mm-hmm. Uh, especially yeah. Um, Honestly, even Krennic. Oh, yeah, Krennic. Like, yeah, because like, you've damaged a bunch of stuff, right? To give it like you know the extra damage and whatnot. But like, if you want to heal stuff up. Well, because it can be split out. Like, anytime you're going kind of wide. And it's update mm-hmm. damage. So, yeah, no. I could see it uh, in draft and limited. It's solid. Um, depending on what you're drafting. But, yeah, the oops all yeah. grit stuff, I could see. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, I like it a lot. Yeah, honestly. nothing super crazy. Um, and it, you know, it is is good to know that it is units and not like also base. So, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, I, as an uncommon, it's pretty solid. Yeah, it might yeah. be a little awkward in draft, but maybe if like if you're, ah, uh, yeah, maybe because like there isn't as much uh, resource ramp in this set as there was in, uh, set one. So I could see that. I mean, this might be a late game. I would pay four for it, right? Yeah. So, yeah, it's all right. Yeah, not bad. Not bad, especially because, like, you're wanting to invest more into your, like, because you're wanting to put experience tokens and stuff like that out on the board to power up those mandos and stuff. So I could see it. Uh Uh-huh, 100%. Yeah. Yeah, and, like, limited. So, all right, let's, next one. We've got Bravado, a five-cost aggression event that's an innate. And uh, if you defeated a unit this phase, this event costs two less to play. You just get to ready up a unit. Yeah, this yeah. card's just fine five cost card. Ready, basically, yeah, ready a unit. Uh, I mean, probably going to be a three cost card. Like, I don't feel you're playing ready a unit for five, but three ready any unit. Not bad. Yeah, you, it's going to be good. Yeah, trade something, ready something else up. Yeah, uncommon. The only thing you can see you potentially doing it with is like if you had a board wipe and like you had a leader that had just been no good to me deaded, and you're like, all right, I'll just ready it. Yeah. Yeah, no, there's so, there's a couple of things. Like I don't know. There's there's a few different I don't know. I like it in limited more than I do like constructed, but I could see some constructed play like scenarios where three ready something isn't awful. Yeah. Ooh, you know, this could be fun in Twin Suns. It's definitely fun in Twin Suns. You're like, already that unit if you attack this person with it. Or just, you know, two of your opponents are in a squabble, and then you're like, hey, I'm just going to ready up my leader again. Yeah, overall, I, I think this card will see play. Um, definitely in limited, potentially in constructed, but definitely Twin Suns as well. Oh, Cheer Red is going to play this, I think, all day, every day. Yeah, that's true. Like, I think this is this is nice because also this is going to let you at least like get some kind of double use out of him before you get into that, you know, uh, rival's fall range. So. 
Oh yeah. Yeah. I think it's like a I think a shoe in there. All right, let's see if it. Ha! Ah, all right. Next up, we have stolen land speeder. Uh, it's a one cost aggression ground unit. It's a three two underworld vehicle speeder. When you play it, uh, you can play it from your hand. Uh, an opponent takes control of it, and then it has a bounty of if you own this unit, play it from your discard pile for free and give an experience token to it. Card's goofy, and I like it. <laughs> it is. It's really funny. This is a really goofy card, um, and it's really thematic, which I appreciate. Um, you know, I don't know. It, it, it costs one to play. It's a three two. Like it's cute. Yeah. Well, your opponent gets it, but then if it like, you basically kill it, and then you get a four three after you kill it, which is kind of a fun twist on the whole bounty thing. Yeah. No, it, it's it's funny. It's cute. Like, it's just a good card. I'm pretty sure that's key. Is that Kira in the driver's seat of it? I think so. I think it's supposed to be the one part from uh, the Solo movie. Oh, okay. Yeah. But yeah, nah, it's fun. Yeah, it's just a solid rare. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> it's not much. Uh, yeah, it's not much. It's just kind of funny. Yeah, I, I thought it was a thematic, like... Great. Like, I had a nice chuckle whenever it got first previewed. But speaking of other things that got previewed, the Marauder, the Shuttle of the Bad Batch. It's a five-cost, cunning, heroic space unit that is a four-five fringe vehicle transport with ambush. When played, choose a card in your discard pile. Uh, Put it into play as a resource if it shares a name with the unit you control. It's just more hunter support with that whole kind of clones Bad Batch little micro theme in the set. So... So no, um, it, it's in. Com- By the way, listeners, it, it's command and heroic. Oh, what did I say? Cunning. You said cunning. Yeah. Oh, uh, my bad. There, there are cunning cards we're going to talk about later tonight that have me very excited. There are indeed. <laughs> Spoilers. Um, yeah. No, I mean, I, I'm always a fan of having fun ambush cards, right? It, it not only is it coming in, it's probably going to kill something, but also you're going to be able to get some of those clones that you had to potentially like, you know resource earlier um to pop in to get rid of a like damage clone maybe uh, you know because they're all unique so i don't know i like it a lot i think it's a it's a cute piece to add to that hunter build as you were talking about mm-hmm. um yeah i like yeah. it a lot it's good and yeah. which is great and a four five ambush isn't uh awful uh so yeah, yeah. and with that ability is pretty good yeah uh all right and so next up we have choose sides it's a seven cost command event. It's a plan. Choose a friendly non-leader unit and an enemy non-leader unit in exchange control of those units. And this is a rare. Yeah. Um, this card is kind of like, this almost feels like a not as good change of heart um, in that like, all right, cool. I'm just going to take that non that non-leader unit, right? Like, you're just gonna give over one of your tiny little chuds for their big, like, Star Destroyer and stuff. Oh, yeah. No, there's, like... Yeah, no, this is just fun. Yeah, this card's great. Um, Yeah, like... And I believe... You know, no notes. This card's good. So, this also, I believe, lets you exchange control of your super laser technician to them. And when it dies, oh, yeah. it goes into your resource row, I believe. Is it friendly? Okay. Um... I'm fairly certain because, like, when it would go to the discard or be defeated, it would re- its ownership would revert back to you, so it'll go into your row. If I'm um, wrong, I'm gonna wait until we get the release notes, but maybe, yeah. I feel like it's got to be like if if I'm wrong, someone in the comments tell me. But if I'm not, that is like chef's kiss magical Christmas land. Right. Yeah. Oh, I'll have to look more into that. But yeah, um, but yeah no, this card, there's a lot of really cute plays that I can think of. Um, it will it will see play in, in command. You love it's pretty good. I mean, I would run more than one of it, but yeah, this yeah. card's good. Uh, great and Twin Sons as well. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, super good Twin Sons. <laughs> yeah. All right. So next up, 
We got our a command leader. It's command villainy, Cad Bane. He who needs no introduction, despite me introducing him here. Uh, he's an underworld bounty hunter. And then he has, when you play an underworld card, you may exhaust this leader. If you do, an opponent chooses a unit they control and deals one damage to it. At six resources, he comes out as a 6-8 with raid two. And then uh, whenever you... And he's a 2-8 with raid two. Yeah, that's what I meant. My bad. Uh, yeah, yeah. And then uh, every time uh, you play an underworld unit, you choose an opponent and deal uh, two damage to a unit they control. Once per round. Yeah, once per round. Um, he's a fine common. I, he's a fun common. Um, I love the character. I mean, he's not crazy. I think he's going to be annoying as all get out and limited. Yeah, I mean, he's a big like eight body. So with all the attachments and things in the in a limited like in the limited drafts and things that are going to happen, I think he'll be pretty good there. Um, but yeah, as for something that I might play in Premiere, uh, probably not. Um, but he's kind of fun. Um, and I mean, he's a really cool character. I think that his showcase will be one of the weird ones where like we're played a lot because he's a very popular character. Um, it will be pretty sought after. Yeah. So the one downside for him is being a cunning villainy hero or leader because he's competing with set one Boba Fett and it's hard to compete with set one Boba Fett. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Well, and you know, without getting, you know, segueing too much, like I, we had our store championship today and of the 14 people that were on our store championship, six of them were playing Boba. Um, most of them were on Boba green. One was on double was on Boba um, and double cunning. But anyways, yeah. Um, Cad doesn't really um, compare. <laughs> obviously to, to uh, leader boba but again he's cool um and i'm sure like people will build around him just because he's a fun character kind of like how people build around ig88 mm-hmm. and stuff like that yeah and i think yeah. it's like we we talk about this usually whenever we're doing spoilers it's important to note that there are some leaders and stuff that like constructed isn't necessarily like their CAD to me feels much more like, hey, this leader was constructed more for the limited experience in mind. So like exactly. It's not that he's like constructed unviable, but yeah. And I'm okay with that. Like, let's be clear. Um, not every card needs to be the leader needs to be, oh my god, it's so good. Um, because that's just not for that would not make for a fun you know, like drafting experience. So, yeah. Right. All right. So speaking of underworld things, though, uh, we got Lady Proxima, the white worm matriarch of one cost. Just. Neutral, that's a zero four underworld. And when another underworld card uh, is played, you may deal one damage to a base. And this is an uncommon. Uh, I can't wait to build an entire deck around this card. Yeah, I mean, you just slot her into current builds of Boba Fett. She'd fit in real, real well. I like her a lot. Um, You know, I mean, the fact that she has that four, like, body as a one coster is is kind of in that cute, like, sweet spot where, like, sure. Um, I mean, they won't be afraid to attack her unless you upgrade her because her attack is zero. Um, But um, you know, they're going to have to waste an action, you know, dealing with her or waste an attack dealing with her, you know. Mm-hmm. And as someone who plays like a fair bit of R2 and 3PO, you'd be surprised how many times like people are just like, oh, it's not worth my time to like deal with this thing. Yeah. And honestly, like I can see her um, if people don't respect her enough. I mean, she's going to get in plenty of damage. Because her whenever you play an underworld card, that is whenever, that is not a once per turn type situation. So, um, you know, there are turns where you can drop her and then do tons of damage. Because also there might be times when it's like, all right, cool, well, I'm going to drop her and then my opponents are going to have to deal with, like, other threats instead before trying to deal with her. For sure. You know? Yeah. So, so yeah. Um, overall, I think she's really, really neat, uh, uncommon. Yeah, no, definitely agree. 
Uh, all right. So next up, we've got uh, Xanadu Blood, Cad Bane's Reward, uh, six costs, cunning, villainy, uh, space unit. That's a four six underworld vehicle fighter. Uh, yeah, fighter. Uh, raid two, when played non attack, you may return another friendly non leader underworld unit to its owner's hand. If you do, exhaust an enemy unit or resource. Which we've seen is like the whole underworld like theme is about bouncing people back and forth from your hand. Yes. For um, Xanadu. Oh, go on. Sorry. Uh, no. Uh, go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say. So yeah, Xanadu Blood. Um, unlike its its owner Cad Bane, um, I would play this card like even without its cool ability because I mean it's a four six with raid two, right? Yeah. No. This. Hits decently well, and just being able to like exhaust enemy units on the attack. Like, yeah, you gotta bounce an underworld unit back to your hand, but like crafty smuggler, like just being able to consistently kind of drop out this annoying like shield unit. Oh yeah, for sure. Or yeah, crafty smuggler. Um, or um, honestly, the uh, um, one little guy that pops out with a shield, right? Mm-hmm. He's good. Yeah, there's all kinds of like, I mean, cutting and cutting villainy in particular is just full of annoying little things you can bounce back and forth from hand. Being able to bounce your uh, Gamodian guards or whatever back to hand and then replay them out is another useful thing. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. So, yeah, overall, pretty cool. Yeah. Um, I like this ship a lot. Yeah, no, I it's. Bet. People kind of been listening to this podcast for a while now that I'm a fan of ships in Star Wars. So, yeah, we're actually getting some decent like space lane stuff that has some utility as well. So, hopefully, we notice a bit more uh, kind of lines of play in the space lane that aren't just I play a wing. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. All right. Next up, we have covert strength. It's a one cost vigilance tactic event. With heal two damage from a unit and give it an experience token. And you can smuggle it out for uh for three. It's fine. It's I mean, yeah, it's yeah. cute. It's it's just, it's a card you draft so that you could put as a resource. Uh actually so I think it's a you can draft it uh if you're doing Mandalorian stuff. Oh sure. I mean healing two damage and giving an experience to it is fine. Yeah. Right? Like it's a fine card. Yeah. And like uh there's some other like useful things we'll talk about that further on, like leaders in draft that would like it. The ability to like convert that experience token into other stuff. So Yeah. Yeah. Uh rule with respect though is silly. This is a four cost <laughs> command heroic event. It's a plan and it is a legendary and it has the text of a friendly unit captures each enemy non-leader unit that attacked your base this phase. Uh, this is my this might be my favorite Leia card of the set. Yeah, it's real good. Um, yeah, I, I, yeah, I understand why it's legendary. Um, you know, th- this is going to be great, Leia. Honestly, I could see Sabine playing this. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, like overall, this is a really good card for those like swing wide decks. I like it in. Uh, I don't necessarily think Command Chewy is going to be the strongest Chewy deck after this set, but it still will be a strong Chewy deck. And I think this mm-hmm. slots in perfectly for like aggro matchups, like before you can kind of stabilize out when your Luke's and your home ones hit. You just have Chewy out there or something that's hiding behind Chewie that you just end of turn, take all the aggro decks, good stuff, and they have to rebuild a board state and you can kind of control them back down. Pretty solid. Yeah. All right. Next up, Bounty Hunter's Quarry. It's a one cost command upgrade. Uh, it's one of the bounties. So the bounty it gives when it attaches to a unit, it search the top five cards of your deck or top 10 instead if this unit is unique. Per unit of cost three or less, put it into play for free. 
Uh, this is another card I actually like in Leia decks. I mean, it, I think it's fine. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so I'm also always a fan of being able to search for the top 10 of things. So, well, the, yeah, yeah. the most important thing for it is the three or less, uh, especially in command, uh, be it like, you know, heroic or villainous. You typically have some very solid sentinels you can pull out at that three cost. Mm -hmm. Echo based defender yeah. and cell block guard alone. Uh, both feel like you know they fill that role no absolutely um yeah no overall this is a good bounty card mm -hmm. yeah no i like this one a lot the uncommon bounties have been like really solid they really have um I, I think it's because they want them to be like powerful and playable um but also not impossible to get a hold of 100%. Uh, I think, I mean, the bounty upgrades, in my opinion, are where the bounty keyword is going to probably see its most, like, play in existing. Yeah. Yeah. No, for sure. Like, unfortunately, I think the bounty, like, the units that have a bounty keyword on them competitively are viewed as kind of a liability, so. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, next up, we have Maul. Uh He's scary. Uh, so we have <laughs> Maul, the Shadow Collective Visionary. Uh, he's a seven cost command villainy, seven six force underworld with ambush and overwhelm on attack. You may choose another friendly underworld unit. If you do, all combat damage that would be dealt to this unit during this attack is dealt to the chosen unit instead. Uh, so Maul had his vision board, you see. He just put Darth Vader on it. So. Yes, that's very true. Um, no, I think it's really funny. Like, you've got Maul, who's like, "Oh well, you know, I'm gonna choose the, I'm gonna choose the super laser technician, and then I'm gonna attack, mm. murder this person, deal damage because of my overwhelm, and kill my super laser technician to then ramp a little bit more." He can't actually. It has to be an underworld unit. Oh, yep, you're right. You're I, right. I guess he could hit like a Greedo or something. There are a couple. Oh, yeah. There are a couple of underworlds I think that have like an on death trigger. But yeah, um, yeah, he's just he's real good. He is um, ambush, overwhelm. He can just bully stuff. Like he's great. So he's a very interesting uh, kind of talking point. So he, him, and Vader, um, unit. There is some compare. Like you could compare. I feel he is. He fills the role of like a budget Vader unit. Agreed. Which I think is important. Now, is he better than Vader unit? No, they're two very different decks, in my opinion. Uh, but it now gives something that is a cheaper option for like someone who, you know, doesn't have the money to shell out for like the legendary Vader unit. So it's cool to see. And I don't necessarily think he's a downgrade. I very much view him as a side grade. Agreed. Um, I mean, they're very different decks that we're going into, in my opinion, um, or different builds, I guess, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, no, overall, uh, I think he will absolutely see play. Um, I appreciate that he's only at the rare slot. Um, you know, with his ability, obviously, it's not as good as unit faders. Um, but that being said, um, I definitely could see him in a lot of uh, command and combat. I actually think both Aiden and Krennic wouldn't necessarily dislike sliding over a bit into some underworld units potentially. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I guess it'll just depend on like the support we see. Mm -hmm. But both Force and Underworld, like he has a lot of things that like he enables, so it's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, yeah, for sure. He comes out, he beats some people when you don't have enough underworld people to keep them alive you can just uh you know mcclunky them back to hand it's gonna be great oh, McClunky. it's my favorite it's my favorite yeah but what about mcclunky uh so next up we have sarah san sinara san sinara san or sinara yeah. san yeah uh loyal to uh kregan kagan kragan kragan yeah there we go it's been a while since i saw all solo uh so yeah four costs vigilance villainy three six underworld with grit 
While this unit is exhausted, she gains bounty, deal five damage to a base. Uh, I think she's a cool unit in limited. Correct. I uh, would not play her otherwise, more than likely. Well, asterisk. Uh, so I could see a valid like talking point of putting her in Grand Inquisitor. Uh, because you can get around the bounty downside, because it's only while she's exhausted. Er, um, but you have to exhaust them to attack. Yeah, but then you Grand Inquisitor her back up. Yeah, but what if she dies? I mean, you gotta play her. I'm, I'm given, like, my edge case where I think she could see some constructive sure. play. I just... She's okay. Five but again. She's at uncommon, so yeah. Five damage to a base though is rough. One fifth to no, one sixth your like health. Like that being said, yeah, no, though, that's, and that's it, right? It's like it's the fact that like I play her and I'm potentially giving my opponent the opportunity to deal five damage to my base. And I don't mm-hmm. love that. Yeah. Though that like low to the ground, like really aggressive Grand Inquisitor build. Maybe, maybe she's like kind of on your like top end. Yeah, maybe. It's hard to say. All right, so next card we've got uh, Craig and Gore, Warbird Captain. Oh, I think I was mixing him up with the uh, the guy Paul Bettany plays in solo. I think so. Yeah. Huh. Uh, he's a six cost villainy unit. That's a six six. And when an enemy attacks your base, give a shield token to a friendly unit in the same arena as the attacker. He's rare. He synergizes with her. It makes sense because uh, there's also that little like uh, little synergistic cycle of Warbird cards. Yeah, I mean, he's he's fun, right? I, I Maybe I would play him um, in a super heavy underworld deck. If you really, I wouldn't pay eight for him, so I'd play him in villainy. Um, I don't know, being able to give a shield token to friendly units just just cause um, seems well, seems all right, honestly. Yeah, no, I think um, I can, I think he can. I think he's going to see a decent amount of play. Like yeah. vomiting shield tokens every time someone attacks your base is annoying for a lot of aggro decks. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, I guess you wouldn't care. You wouldn't care as much about Sentinel then if you were running to play him, right? As in, like you maybe don't want to run as much Sentinel because they're not attacking the base; they're attacking the Sentinel unit instead. But mm. um, overall, yeah, he's. I think he's solid. He will see play. I can see him. Uh, he's a very interest, uh, interesting sideboard piece for like the aggro matchup because being yeah. able to drop out shields and like trade hyper like effectively with uh, aggro players or. You know, yeah. Neat. All right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, next up we have uh, Cobb Vanth, the Marshal. He's a three-cost command. Uh, ground unit, 3-2, fringe official. When defeated, search top 10 cards of your deck for a two-cost or less unit. Uh, discard it. For this phase, you may play that card from your discard pile for free. So yeah, he dies, you get a, get a two-coster. But not immediately. Yeah, he's all right. Um, yeah. You know, flavor wise, I think he should have been able to equip Boba's armor. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, that aside, yeah, he's fine. Um, I think he. I would love to see him in draft. Like to be honest. Um, yeah, he's just really cool. Yeah. I don't um, know. There's some, don't know. there's some two cost cards that have decent like uh win plate effects so Mm -hmm. yeah yeah no i think he's fine and also he doesn't have the the villainy or heroic um tax so Mm -hmm. that's kind of fun he just kind of fits into anything as long as you're running command um i probably wouldn't play him if i wasn't in um in aspect with him but definitely um, yeah yeah that's fine though um and definitely like i think a limited bomb um in that just because you're able to pick out another free body mm-hmm. um realistically if you're drafting your deck is small being able to search through 
uh, a little over half of your deck seems all right. And I'm just imagining, like, you don't have him turn one or whatever. Like, you play him a few turns later. So, realistically, you know, after you're putting down resources and drawing your hand, you're going to look through half your deck. So, he's yeah. okay. He's fine. All right, next up. Crate Dragon. It costs nine. It's an aggression ground unit. It's a 10-10 creature with Overwhelm. And when your opponent plays a card, you may deal damage equal to that card's cost to their base or the ground unit they control. This is a legendary. I like big stompy monster. Yeah, this, this, I love it. This Crate Dragon's really cool. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just a good card. I get why it's a legendary. Um, it's a it's a Crate Dragon. Like, what more can you say? Um, you it, know, it's going to be real, real, real gross, and your opponents are going to have to... Um, I mean... God, like it's just it's so powerful. Like even kill kill it like kill spells on it, right? Like mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like it's just gonna cost a lot. Yeah, man. R- Rivals fall my crate dragon. I'll deal sixty percent of his uh, damage to you. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, Th- that said, uh, getting it out at nine cost is gonna be difficult. Um, yeah. So I think. For the most part, it lives in the realm of cheesing it out with uh, various uh, silly effects. Or if you're playing some kind of like command aggression deck that is wanting to kind of stall the game out for a while. Look, you can just play just play Galactic Ambition, take the nine damage and be done with it. I mean, that's not not a bad idea, honestly. Yeah, I mean, um, it depends. Yeah, uh, this card's fun. No, there. I mean, there are plenty of ways. Like, I don't think it's it's difficult. It's not like it's not going to be like top tier competitively viable to get it out. I think because like games are moving pretty quickly. Um, yeah. That being said, like if the meta slows down a bit at some point, like if you're in like a vigilance aggression, I could see like super laser blast. And like you have some of these in there as like your top curve, like I've super laser blast next turn. I drop this thing out and now you have to figure out what to do about it. Maybe. But yeah, no, I can see that. I can see that in like an Iden or Krennic deck. There's also um, if we can get enough command uh, ramp. You know, I it's not. Unheard of to potentially hit like you know, nine resources on when the normal seven resource turn might be. Get this thing yeah. out and kind of put this, you know, question that your opponent has to answer or else. But oh, yeah, no, and that's it, right? They 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 have to answer this. It's mm-hmm. kind of like when you drop a Star Destroyer, like they, your opponent has to like has to answer it or else lose, basically. Yeah. That all being said though, uh insert my normal uh five health remaining just play you're my only hope Get okay it for free. Wow. uh <laughs> sure. or what you could, you could play it like on your seven on your seven turn if it's the top card of your deck and you're my only hope and it costs five less oh okay yeah okay. and then hey when we get to the double pip uh green card here in a bit I'll also bring it up for its goofy fun because it's very. Don't all leave in that Chris's land today. Uh, So I'm just saying it's important to note that Crate Dragon is not unique. That is true. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, There are more than dragons out there. Yeah. But next up, we have a unique character that's after my own heart, and that's Tarful, Kashyyyk Chieftain, a seven cost heroic card. He's a 3-9 Wookiee with Restore 2. And when a Wookiee unit is dealt combat damage and isn't defeated, that unit deals that much damage to an enemy ground unit. So uh, when they previewed Tarful, uh, Operation Oops All Wookiees went live. And Operation Oops All Wookiees is looking pretty great. You are going to be playing a Wookiee deck at Gen Con, right? Uh, yeah, almost certainly. <laughs> Good. I, I will, if you find me at Gen Con, I will most definitely have a Wookiee deck uh, sleeved up. Yeah. Uh, Tarful's great. We we love Wookiee support, and here he is. 
Yeah, he's very uh, he himself is interesting. Uh, so he doesn't have like Sentinel grit, anything like that. So he is like an enabler and you need those other Wookiees to kind of stay behind, like for kind of stay out in front of him so he can like do his thing. Uh, I like that he's just mono heroic. That lets him fit into both the kind of the vigilance cunning and the double vigilance like Wookiee builds. And I actually think the double vigilance Wookiee builds might be where it's at. As we talk about some of the cunning Wookiees, um, I don't necessarily think they are uh, as key to the whole like Wookiee package as the vigilance Wookiees are. So, uh, but like Tarful behind like a bunch of vigilance restore stuff and a decent amount of Wookiees, I think is pretty solid. And having access to both the heals from Vigilance, the legendary card, as well as things like we talked about earlier with the double pip uh, heal like eight from units you control. I think that's like where that whole archetype kind of like you're just going to need to keep healing and building like this wall of Wookiees your opponent has to try to chew through and you just saturate with Sentinels. Uh, No notes. Purple's great. Yeah. All right. So next. We have uh, I'll take this one. Oh, yeah. It's a cal- it's a it is a capital ship. ship. This one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we have the Outlaw Corona. It's a three cost uh, command unit, space unit. It is uh, Underworld Vehicle Capital Ship. Got three attack, five body. You got Bounty. Put the top card of your deck into play as a resource. This unit defeated or captured. Your opponent collects his bounty. Uh, yeah. Capital Ship. Outlaw Capital Ship. Worth noting, as it's a three cost underworld card, and like you got plenty of ways to bounce underworld stuff back to hand, and everything. And like in the space lane at three, at like the three cost drop slot, it's going to be pretty safe. It's going to be able to get an attack, maybe even two in before you have to super worry about it in most cases, like getting removed from the table. Yeah. Well, and also, I mean, sure, it does some ramp, but it's bounty there. Like, say your opponent knows the top card of their deck and likes it or whatever. Like, maybe they played something which allowed them to, like, kind of fix the top of their deck. They're, it says bounty, put the top card of your deck into play as a resource. That mm-hmm. isn't a may. Yep. So, um, I I think there are some edge cases where this card will be pretty decent, um, especially against cards um, in, in um, Vigilance, in my opinion. Um, I think will be pretty good just because they care a bit about they have them cards that will allow them to like look right. So mm-hmm. and also against certain things like there are certain things like uh, Sabine, like yeah. who isn't playing a like what are they playing like they're typically a lot of the Sabine Cunnings. The main thing they're playing in the space lane is the Falcon, and the Falcon can't take this thing out in a single hit. Yeah, that's true. So and then. There are also some of those where like they'll burn through their whole hand or, you know, once they hit a certain resource cap, it doesn't mean much if this comes into play as a resource. So there's some like edge play for it. Uh, definitely an interest, like a super solid card in. Uh, in draft. You can yeah. also have it do the one thing with the, the seven costs, you bounce it to your opponent's side and you defeat it and you get the resource. That is true. Don't do that. That that's a bad waste of time. Yeah, no, yeah. no that's not what you want to do. But well, it, maybe it not that. I don't know. Like you could take something nice from them. I don't know. We're we're getting into. We'll talk about a uh, Katan Kintan Intimidator, one cost, cunning, villainy, one four underworld and on attack, exhaust the defender. I actually like this guy a lot. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's like, all right, cool. I guess I'm going to die, but whatever I kill is going down with me. I mean, it doesn't die, but it just, it's exhausted. Yeah. The thing is, this can hit leaders. Yes, it can. Yeah, so, like, yeah, I'm more than happy to, like, throw him into, like, throw him in the Vader. He, oh, no, he dies, but Vader isn't getting to deal Vader damage plus, like, you know, the two on his on attack trigger. Uh, yeah, you, or Luke, po- pooping shields. Mm-hmm. Or throw him into a Chewbacca. Oh, yeah, that's true. Mm-hmm. Uh, very nice to throw in the Bobas. 
Oh, that's gross. Yeah. Yeah, no. Like, because that's what his job is. Like, you can also, you can toss him into Sabine's uh, and he'll still live. Which is nice. Yeah, no, that's true. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, no, I, he's fine, honestly, for you know, for what he is, right? Oh, I think like I think cunning villainy. He's gonna be probably like Max Coffees. I think he's gonna probably replace Greedo. Oh, really? If I'm wanting to play something a little more like cagey and slow you down, so I can get my game plan online, I think he does more than Greedo in that regard. Okay. Yeah, no, I I agree, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Greedo, yeah, if I'm just, like, tossing Greedo at your base and dealing three damage, that's cool. But there just comes a point in the game where, like, I don't know, Greedo's just kind of, eh? But this guy's... You don't want to play him? Yeah, yeah, this guy is non-unique. I can always drop one of these down, and now you have to attack into it, or else I get the bonus of just, like negating one of your unit like whatever you have on the board for the round yeah so that's fair yeah all right so next up we have smuggler star fighter yeah uh it's for lom and zuckus's ship it's uh three cost cunning space unit a 2-2 underworld vehicle transport when it's played uh if you control another underworld unit give an enemy unit minus three minus zero for this phase you can smuggle it out for four, uh, four cunning. This is a common. I think this is like, there's so many goofy, like, if you're playing like a cunning underworld deck, you can keep, like, you can McClunky this thing. Like, you can do a lot of things where your opponent, it's like offensive output gets, like, just destroyed for a turn. I know, for sure. Um, yeah, no, this card's great. Mm-hmm. It's three costs, um, like dropping this on the like after they drop Sabine. Yeah. Like any of those leaders that like they kind of want to like drop down and start doing stuff like. Uh, Krennics that you can swing into and there's no like. No consequences. Yeah, we love that. Yeah. So. And I think the four smuggle cost is like, I think you're happy to play it. I think he's okay mm-hmm. at the smuggle cost, but it's neat that it has that utility. Yep, yep. All right. Ready for the next one? Yeah. Next one is uh, Warsher Tree Tender. Uh, this is a three cost Vigilance 2 4 Wookiee with Grit. Uh, so what's important about this card? Two things. It's a Wookiee. First one, it's a Wookiee. Second, it has grit. Third, we're not talking about a lot. Uh, being at two, four, uh, dropping at three, uh, you can actually, uh, I think Ray is going to be a very solid leader to run the, like, Wookiee package through, uh, be it a double vigilance or a vigilance cunning Ray. So... Like something like this, once he becomes like a three five with grit, that's gross. Be it you have to put that experience token on him before an opponent can attack into him, but I think there's very yeah. there's very much something for like a ray deck that's like steadily kind of pumping up the lower end Wookiees, and then you can kind of set behind the Sentinel Wookiees and stuff like that. No, for sure. Um, you know this Wookiee's. I mean, yeah, it's it goes a Wookiee dot deck. It's it's good, fine. No, no, Not but, a whole lot. I don't think there's a whole lot to talk about with it, right? Yeah, it's two four with grit. Like it's one more than the swoop bike, uh, rider, and it's got one more attack power. So, and yeah, true. yeah no, swoop bike riders are really annoying. So. Yes, it is. Yeah, or a so scout. Yeah. All right, so next up, we've got Finnick Shand. Honoring the deal. This is the most bonkers leader we've seen. Uh, she's an underworld, uh, cunning heroic with action, spend a resource and exhaust, play a unit that costs four or less from your hand, paying its cost. 
give it ambush for this phase. And then at five resources, she comes out as a 4-4 saboteur. With action, play a unit that costs four or less from your hand, paying its cost, and give it ambush for the phase. It's an action, not an on-attack action. Yeah, Fending Chain's real good. Yeah. Um, we got a friend who's been kind of testing her out with some like healing stuff, and she does a lot of kind of spicy stuff with that. Um, she just has... A, being able... Action, like just an action, right? Mm -hmm. Action economy there, it's so good. Play a unit that costs four or less from your hand, give it ambush. I mean, you still have to pay its cost, right? Like, it is so good being able to just poop out. The, the amount of times that I've wished I've been able to just ambush a card in, right? Like, mm -hmm. to deal with a threat, like, I would have killed for this card. Not actually killed. That's yeah. intense. But, uh, no, this she's just good. I mean, so... Like, Energy Conversion Lab is like one of the most was like one of the most played bases in the game. And she is a slightly like slight so it's not six or greater, but four or less, you can do it every turn. And that's like there's still stuff in that four and less that disproportionately can deal some attack damage and deal some like interesting things. And the fact she gets to do it as an action on her unit side instead of it being like an on attack or something. Yeah. Yeah, that's why it's so good. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have to deal with her. Now, that being said, she does only have four, four defense. So take yeah. that how you will. Yeah, but... she's uh, she's weaker than Aiden in that regard. Because Aiden comes out with a sh shield. Yeah. But... Yeah, the ability, though, to get that ambush, like, I think you're okay with it. Because, like, before you're bringing her out, you're probably, nah, you probably are going to wait till after you, like, epic her out to do her action. But yeah, I think she'll yeah. stick. She'll stick better than you think. Right. Well, I, I guess it'll it'll depend on the, the state of the game, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, it also it she lets you reassess a bunch of the cards that are like if you have a leader out do this because there's like that oh, yeah, one that's very true yeah that one little Z ninety five that's like from set one that's just kind of so so you're like eh whatever inside her deck like that has like a whole new lease on life as this really annoying space lane unit that can do like a little trade with another small space lane unit and then like exhaust something that's like not bad. No, oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. All right. I just think she's, yeah, I think she's good. Yeah, I agree. All right. So next one. Next. Well, you, buddy. Uh, next one. There we go. Fugitive Wookiee. Two cost. Cunning Wookiee. It's a 3-3. Three, three. The bounty it has is exhaust a unit. It's a common. If you're wanting to do the cunning vigilance, like, oops, all Wookiees deck, this is, in fact, a Wookiee that you can say, oops, it's a Wookiee. You actually probably aren't playing it on curve, though. You are going to want to play this thing once, like, uh, you've got, like, a Sentinel or something out. I'm just not blown away by the Cunning Wookiees. I probably am leaning to playing the Double Vigilance Wookiee deck, but... Yeah, no, I... It's... It is a Wookiee. Um, but yeah, no, definitely, like, Cards of the Bounty, like... Unless they blow me away, I'm probably not playing them because I don't like letting my opponent have things. I mean, yeah. Yeah, this card's fine. I mean, it, it'll be played in, in you know, in, in limited, but otherwise, I don't know if I would be playing that even in Oops All, like, like Wookie Dot deck. Yeah. All right, let's go to the next card. We got Wookie Warrior. It's a four cost, heroic, two five with grit. Uh, and he has, if you control another Wookiee, you get to draw a card. This guy is just pure gas. Yep. Three of and Wookiee dot deck. Yeah. Uh, man, this is really good. This is, I mean, with that five, with that five defense, uh, that five body, like five health, I should say, like it's, it's good. With Brit. Mm hmm. And with the he amount of healing, if you're running him in vigilance, like, yeah, no, it's a good card. Yeah. I just like the, the, the draw. The draw is going to do so much work. 
Absolutely it is. All right. You're so, actually getting a 2 5 for nothing. Yeah. Uh, so, without losing a card. Yeah. Next up, we have Black Sun Starfighter. It's a three cost villainy that's a space unit that's a 3 2 with Sentinel. It's got Underworld, Vehicle, and Fighter. Uh, it's a common. It's it's space. Uh, what's his face? Uh, cell block guard. Yeah. Yeah. Not That's bad. A, yeah, exactly. It. I mean, it's 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 villainy is not as good answer to patrol craft. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's okay. Yeah. If you if you need the space sentinel, it's cheap. And then we got cloud rider, two cost cunning three one with ambush. It's got underworld. It uh, is. So it's fine. Yeah. So this card is relevant for. Let's talk about Inif's Nest, a Marauder, six cost cunning, five four underworld with ambush. And while a friendly unit, including this one, is attacking using ambush, the defender gets minus three, minus zero. It the cloud runner is supposed to be played with this so that like it gets to basically give minus three to something, it gets a free kill, and then maybe an attack or something. Yeah. Yep, that's that is what you play him with. So, um, and if Snest is fine, um, I, he's a cute card to build around, but like again, like it, it's good, right? But like, I don't know, he's fine. Yeah, she. I thought it was she. Hmm. No, it's been a what? while since I watched Solo. I don't remember. Hey, it's the Dark Saber. <laughs> <laughs> it's four cost command. <laughs> it's four cost command upgrade. Plus four plus three Mandalorian item weapon legendary attached to a non vehicle unit. While playing this upgrade on a Mandalorian unit, ignore its aspect penalty. Uh, attach unit gains on attack, give an experience token to each other Mandalorian unit. This is just good. It's really good. Mandalorian. Like, typo decks are gonna play it. It's yeah, yeah. No, uh, this card's great. I understand why it's legendary. Um, yeah, it's just good being able to poop out an experience token on each of your friendly Mando Mando units. No complaints. Card's great. Like, I a lot other to say than it's just a good card. Yeah. All right. It's real good. Next up, we have Endless Legions, a 14 cost double command card. It's a legendary. Reveal any number of resources you control. Play each unit revealed this way for free, one at a time. So this is an alternate win condition. Uh, of the time of the recording, we've seen two of the four double pip uh, aspect cards for the legendary slot this set. Uh, each are feeling like they're like a kind of a win con of their own. Uh, Endless Legions, I don't think, is probably going to be competitively viable until we get a bunch of goofy ramp or some way to, like, cheat it out. This might be a Galactic Ambition. Or a Galactic Ambition only does a unit, right? Uh, I believe it is a unit, yes. Yeah, okay. So, yeah. Right now, there will come a time, maybe, when this does its thing. Uh, maybe it is the you're playing to tutor it to the top of your deck when you're at five or less health and play you're my only hope. And then you play 14, you know, resources or whatever. But yeah, it's silly. We could we could go into all the magical Christmas land of it, but uh this cast is already kind of chugging along. So uh Yeah. It, um yeah, no, instead of going to magical Christmas land, right? Like you're probably not going to play this card. I mean, maybe eventually, but not right now. Yeah. There will come a day and it'll be magical. Uh, we got Gar Saxon. Uh, he is a leader, Imperial Mandalorian official, Viceroy of Mandalore. He gets uh, each friendly upgraded unit gets plus one attack, plus one or plus zero health. At six, he comes out as a four seven uh, vigilance villainy. And then each upgraded unit gets that plus one attack and gains when defeated, you may return an upgrade that was attached to this unit to its owner's hand. He's the villainy kind of Mandalorian typal, kind of like how Bo is the 
a heroic one. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, he's, you know, he's fine. Uh, he he is part of the Mando, you know, um, Upgrades Matter mm-hmm. deck type like, archetype, so I do think it is neat that, you know, you'll be able to get those attachments back. Um, I am thinking, you know, the Darksaber is one of them. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, um, yeah, he seems okay. Yeah, I mean, as a common leader, I think he's, like, very built. I think he might actually see some play. I do, too. Mm-hmm. Um, especially just his stats alone. Yeah. I think he's fine. All right. Well, next up, we have Brutal Traditions. It's a two-cost Vigilance Villainy upgrade. He gives plus one attack, plus two uh, health, and it has action. If an enemy unit was defeated this phase, play this upgrade from your discard pile. So... I think this goes in Gar. This goes in a lot of like blue villainy, but uh, I think Kylo decks want to run this. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah. I mean, especially with him, like, you know, discarding cards and stuff to power up. Um, yeah. No, Fruit of Jesus is fine. Yeah, I like it. Uh, then we got Clan Saxon uh, Gauntlet. This is a six cost vigilance villainy space unit. It's got Mandalorian Vehicle Transport, 4-5 Sentinel, and when this unit attacks, or sorry, when this unit is attacked, you may give an experience token to a unit before damage is dealt. So yeah, you can... Yeah, I think it's, it's pretty good. Yeah, it can buff itself up uh, in like a worst case scenario, or it can start like building up your Mando board. Really good stuff. Yeah. yeah. All right. Next up, we have Pre Vizsla, Power Hungry. This is a seven cost aggression villainy, uh, eight seven Mandalorian trooper. And when played slash on attack, you may pay the cost of an upgrade attached to another non vehicle unit. If you do, take control of that upgrade and attach it to this unit if able. Uh, if it can't attach to this unit, defeat it instead. This is a rare. So, yeah. Um, Worth noting, you can steal experience and shield tokens. That is true, yeah. Um, yeah, no, I think he's good. He'll see play. Yeah, no, I definitely I definitely think he'll see play. I think uh I think he'll see play in a lot of stuff, to be honest. Uh being both Mandalorian and Trooper, like he fits a lot of things. <laughs> Yeah, uh, well, and he's he's dangerous, right? I mm-hmm. mean, yeah, it, yeah. I just being able to steal a shield. His shields cost zero, so well, I'm gonna steal your shield, like, and then kill you, like, or just steal it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh. So next up, we have Finn Rao, Protector of the Concord Dawn, six cost vigilance, five six Mandalorian. Uh, When played, you may play an upgrade from your hand. It costs two less. And then when you play an upgrade on this unit, give an enemy unit minus two, minus two this phase. Uh, Yeah, there's some goofy like stuff you can do with uh, kind of the minus two, minus two, taking out like chaff units and stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Or, you know, okay, um, I needed to get something to a certain amount of health, like, you know, five or less, right, to do takedown and things like that. So... Yeah, this card is pretty good. Uh, all right. Next up, Maz Kanata, Pirate Queen, one cost, command heroic, 1-1 one, one Underworld. Uh, when you play another unit, give it an experience token to this unit. Yeah, she's yeah. cute. It's a cute play. You play her in Endless Legions. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. So she's funny. She's a fun uh like she's not bad. Yeah, no, she's fine, right? Like she's cute to play on turn one, to be honest. Um Yeah, I she's fine. She's a rare. You could do stuff with her. Um I'm just like, kinda like thinking of some of the like I mean she'd be kind of fun with heaving reinforcements and things like that, so Yeah. yeah I don't know. She's all right. Yeah, she's pretty yeah, she's pretty great. Mercenary gunship. 
uh, two cost, neutral space unit, three, two, underworld vehicle fighter, and has action, spin four, take control of this unit. Any player may use this ability. These are fun, like the, uh, like, what it was Game of Thrones had Brawn, and that's how he kind of operated. You could, you could spend money to take control of it from your opponent, and it's just kind of aggressively statted. Um, I think this is fun, fun in draft. Yeah, this card is definitely a flavor win for me. Oh for yeah. Sure. Uh, also, kind of a cute political tool for um, Twin Sons. Yes, it is. So, yeah, overall, really like the card a lot. Yep. All right. So next one is Spark of Hope. Two costs. Command Heroic Event. Choose a unit in your discard pile. If it was defeated this phase, put it in the play as a resource. Because Leia needed more ramp. Leia actually did need more ramp. <laughs> this is... Uh, yeah, no, this is on par with like super laser tech and kind of helps a heroic command also be able to ramp in a similar way. So uh, yeah. I actually think this is a Chewy card more than it's a Leia card. Yeah, that's fair. Um, but yeah, no, this card just is pretty good. Yeah. Heck, you could even play it in Sabine, maybe. I mean, uh, Sabine's really aggressive. I don't know if you would have the time or want to use the resources to do that. but. Um, yeah, no, it's just, it's a solid card. It will see play and uh, constructed. It definitely will. Uh, probably slap in three of this thing in the Chewy. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. All right. Next up, Supreme Leader Snoke. He's an eight cost vigilance villainy. He's the shadow ruler. Uh, six, six, force, first order official. And then each enemy non-leader unit gets minus two, minus two. He's a legendary. Uh, he's Elish Norn. Yeah, he's Elish Norn. He he is <laughs> he is just like Elish Norn minus the giving giving your own stuff the bonuses. But that's not why anybody played Elish Norn. You played it for giving each of your like enemy non leader unit or I guess you know units minus two minus two. This card is great. Yeah, you you put him on the table and a certain cost bracket of units can't be played. <laughs> Correct. Um. Yeah. He is he is a board wipe for chat. Um. Because I don't care if you are. If you have minus two, minus two, you're dead. Yep. If you're, you know, tiny or whatever, right? So, like, yeah, I, I, and yeah, I mean, he's a six, six, you know, he, he triggers, he has that force keyword too, which is also important. So, overall, okay. he's a really good card. I like him a lot. And also, the official keyword's important. It turns on like a couple of different sentinels and stuff. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, next up, we've got Pillage. It's a four-cost aggression event tactic. Choose a player. They discard two cards from their hand. It's okay. This card is really annoying. I, yeah. Hand destruction is a thing that we've been seeing as like this little sub-theme in red. And this is just another step closer to, to the redundant events to make it happen. That is true. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's fine. It's good. It's annoying. Yeah. Uh, unrefusable offer. Two-cost cunning bounty and you gotta attach it to a non-leader unit and attach unit gains bounty play this unit for free under your control it enters play ready at the start of the regroup phase defeat it yeah this, yeah but this one's cute so right. i like it yeah no this is uh and this is is this the first rare bounty we've seen i think it is um and this is why i really like this card so yeah it, it's fun. I'm just imagining stealing stealing my opponent's gigantic things. So you gotta kill it. It's first. kinda fun. Well, sure. Right. You're you're only going to do it if you know you can do it, right? Like there are plays being set up for this. But oh, yeah. Um, yeah. No, this card's fun. Alright. And then we got Finn Leader. Uh Finn, this is a rescue. He's a vigilance heroic rare leader, fringe and trooper. He has action, defeat a friendly upgrade on a unit if you do give a shield token to that unit. At five resources, he comes into play as a 4-6. Uh, with on attack, you may defeat a friendly upgrade on a unit if you do give a shield token to that unit. A little lackluster. Um, that being said, uh, the Rose Tycho card synergizes with him a lot, where you can like defeat a shield and get two experience tokens. Yeah. So like... 
There is an engine there where you can do this thing where you start rapidly generating shields or consistently generating shields. Um, he might actually slot into like a Mandalorian package and do okay. There's a lot of incidental like experience tokens. Yeah, and then, that's true. Yeah. And if we ever get like, you know, maybe a couple of different like non-unique like upgrades that you can recur for super cheap like there becomes to be or there starts being a conversation right now i don't think he's great but i'm not like i think he's he's an interesting prospect in twin sons yeah that's fair all right uh and i think on that one we'll take a we'll take a break uh, because this is uh, for our first video. I don't want it to be a two hour long video and us have to like, uh, yeah, <laughs> the render and the file size and all that. Uh, so yeah, uh, thanks for joining us, everyone. Uh, we'll probably get a part two for this coming out as well. So uh, yeah. Yeah, thanks, folks. Yeah. All right. Well, cool, cool. Uh, if you liked what we did here, check us out. J Theron Podcast, Facebook, the podcast. If you're on the YouTube channel, like, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And yeah, with that all being said, I've been your host, Shay. And I've been Jordan. Take it easy, everyone.